Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. <sighs> oh boy. There goes another bad movie experience for me. I just saw a new horror film that's based on a Stephen King adaptation that came out a decade ago simply called Cell. Not to be confused with the film The Cell with Jennifer Lopez, Vince Vaughn, and Vincent D'Onofrio, which is a visionary thriller about a cop that's about to go inside a serial killer that she's about to stop. And that definitely is a much better thriller than this garbage that I just went to see. And it's not pleasant to, to sit through because this time it's a movie about cell phone users who turn into homicidal maniac zombies getting ready for the zombie apocalypse. And boy, we've been seeing so many movies like that these days that frankly, I'm getting tired of it. And on top of that, Stephen King now brings in a collaboration with John Cusack, who's the executive producer of the film, <laughs> hard to believe, and Samuel Jackson, which they all collaborated since the movie 1408, which is a much better film that Stephen King has ever done. Yeah, I know he didn't direct it, but he did uh, wrote it uh, that's based on his novel, which is a story about a writer who checks in a hotel room that turns out to be very haunted and it's playing mind tricks towards you. That was a much better film and it came out almost nearly 10 years ago. And still remains so today because it definitely had a twist in the film and trust me, it really tricks the audience completely. It even tricks me having to sit, sit through the film being very uh, surprisingly uh, shocked and entertaining to say that this movie was very scary and it definitely gets to you on the edge of my seat. Yeah, and I really love that film too. In, in fact, believe it or not, that movie had so many endings to the movie that, wow, this movie was really something. Yeah. But this movie is no 1408, and that's sad. <laughs> it really is. Because John Cusack and Samuel Jackson definitely have terrific chemistry when it comes to a film like, like 1408. And definitely I, I expected for them to be quite as entertaining for, for 98 minutes filled with torture. But unfortunately, they couldn't save this mess because they look completely bored, tired, and and it's just not a very well-made film, and it's sad. So get ready because I'm going to review this sucker. It stars John Cusack, Samuel Jackson, Isabel Fruman who's been best known for that terrible, horrible film, because I'm actually one of the few people who actually hated this movie, called Orphan. And as talented as this actress is, that film was a piece of fucking shit. Another totally rip-off of the movie The Bad Seed. We've been seeing that so many these days of, of having a nice kid that turns into a serial killer. Been there, done that. <laughs> but she's been in some better films like uh, From Up on Poppy Hill, as well as The Hunger Games. But she's also been in bad films like After Earth and Hound Dog. That was her first film, by the way. So, And she's been in s several shows. <laughs> wow. There you go. With Stacy Keach who's a legendary actor. He was, she, he was in the TV series uh, Titus, played the fodder. He was very good on that show, and he's been in several movies. He even played uh, Mike Hammer, too. Wilbur Fitzgerald, 
Alex T. Aves, Clark Sorello, Ethan Andrew Kistu, Owen Teague, Catherine Dyer, E. Roger Mitchell, Aaron Elizabeth Burns, Tinsel Corey, and Anthony Reynolds. It's based on the novel by Stephen King called The Cell, who wrote the screenplay with Adam Aleka, and it's directed by Todd Williams, who's been best known for directing that terrible, forgettable sequel, Paranormal Activity 2. But he also did the film The Adventures of Sebastian Cole. Wow. What a career. The movie begins in one of his supposedly good days. We meet a graphic novelist, Clayton Riddell, nicknamed Clay, who is played by John Cusack, who suddenly gets a big contract at a publishing company where he finally sells all of his uh, graphic novels. When he was at the Boston Logan Airport in Boston, Clay calls in his wife, Clark, who is played by Clark Sorello, to share him the big news. But then he also gets to talk to his son, Johnny, who is played by Ethan Andrew Costell, by using uh, FaceTime on his cell phone just before his battery dies. So then he brings in his recharger. He was trying to find every single plug out there in the airport, but sadly, everybody with their cell phones are using it. So unfortunately, he decided to make a phone call until all of a sudden, there was a power outage that was affecting from the electromagnetic uh, signal that was coming from all the satellites and actually controls every single cell phone users out there to turn into homicidal maniac zombies which they go around saliva frothing into their mouths into a brutal rage and attacking every single person out there yeah they, there's actually one girl who, who frothes at the mouth and, and hits her head there's even one cop who actually ate his German Shepherd there's like so many other people just you know dropping like flies they fell all the way from the stairs everyone is like <laughs> attacking all one into another into a very violent massacre that's about to happen and of course they're about to feed everyone who aren't uh, using any cell phones at all so that's where it leads to a very gross out uh, violence right there so then the play actually escapes and winds up teaming up with a subway engineer Tom McCourt who's played by Samuel Jackson who was about to escape out of the tunnel and inside the city where he winds up going inside um, Tom's apartment to stay around for a while so they can get away from the zombies. Tom has a neighbor who's a girl who just killed her mother named Alice who's played by Isabel Fuhrman. They're basically trying to figure it out what's happening in the city and why is everyone turning into zombies after using cell phones. Well they begin to figure it out because now they're considered themselves as, you know, basically phoners. So that means that whenever they use a cell phone, they're going to start um, colliding each other and going around attacking everybody. And then, of course, you know, they created a hive once they hear the signal. And, and every time those zombies open their mouth, it creates a... A very strange uh, interfering sound that's coming right straight to their mouths and then there are times when you can actually hear their mouths opening and you get to hear music that's coming out of their phones or or any videos or any of that stuff yeah I'm not kidding they they actually did that and they, they mostly flock around like they're birds 
and they even said it in the movie. Oh my god, and on top of that, just to find somewhere safe, Clay, Tom, and Alice have went to a university where they meet a uh, pastor, Charles Aldai, who's played by Stacy Keach, along with Jordan, a boy who's played by Owen Teague. He was about to set all the zombies into a football field and have Tom and Clay drive a gasoline truck just to run over them, spray with them with fuel, and light it up on fire. Of course, he dies because unfortunately, since the truck had exploded, it actually stabbed him because he actually went all the way near it. Yeah, I know. Then, of course, they went to a driving feeder that's abandoned. And they went to fall asleep, and they're actually having nightmares about a strange creature that's wearing a red hoodie. Basically, it's a zombie. And, yes, everybody had the same nightmare, hard to believe. Because mostly because Clay actually created him. Oh, please. So... They wound up finding another place to stay for, for the night, which is a local bar. But then, of course, the zombies came back. You know, they were at the bar just listening to the song, Rain My Bell. Yeah, a classic uh, 70s song in the mix. Yeah, just for laughs. Suddenly, they, they wound up becoming one of them. And they wound up attacking, and they actually killed Alice. Which apparently, yes, I hate to spoil the surprise, but if you love Isabel Fuhrman, well, get ready because she's dead. Yeah, there was blood that's going through the right of her eye. Other one is normal, and she's just talking some some gibberish words about, oh, I can see the, the birds flocking around. Yeah, there you go. And it just goes on and on and on. You know, where, where Clay was just trying to find his son because of this incident that's happening. They, they actually meet a one man who basically talks uh, crazy. You know, he's basically stayed up for like six days or so. Then he actually strapped his explosives on his neck and, and kills himself. Um, by exploding his head. Uh, he also has um, a daughter who survives you know, after they kill the guy who's just uh, who has um, Clay's son's voice on there. Oh, and then basically Clay's just on his way, just trying to go all the way up to the signal, uh, all, all the way up to the, uh, the satellite port, you know, just to go look for his son. And it just leads to there. It's. I'm sorry, man. This movie just fucking sucks. It's no wonder this movie had a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's one of the most boring, stupid zombie apocalypse movies I've ever seen. I'm just amazed that this movie got released on video on demand where all the other bad movies go to die. John Cusack looks totally bored in this movie. I mean, it's just sad to actually see his career really falling. I mean, he's already better off dead now. I mean, geez, after 2012 and all these other bad films he's been in, I mean, it's sad because his last good movie I ever did saw was Hup Tip Time Machine. Yeah, and that was a funny comedy. I love that movie. And he's just doing more crappy movies after that. It's ridiculous. Samuel Jackson, well, he's been in several bad films too. And incredibly forgettable ones also, but there you go. I mean, he seems like a waste. Isabel Fugman, 
been in some bad films too. Nothing special for her character, although to be fair, at least she's the only one that could be alive in this movie, even though <laughs> she's now dead in the film. I'm sorry I gave away the surprise, but there you go. Uh, nothing special. This movie sucks. All you see is a bunch of homicidal maniac zombies, you know, going way out of control, opening their mouths, creating that irritating, uh, interfering snow signal that you hear coming out of their mouths that actually affects their brain. See, like a battery. Yes, even the kid actually said that. It was like a battery that can recharge, and no matter what they do, they're going to control themselves like a cell phone. Oh, boy. Whoa, I mean... Geez, this is really interesting to actually see a cell phone that you put into your ears and suddenly creates an electromagnetic signal and suddenly it goes straight to your brain and you just go completely nuts! Wow! That's entertaining, huh? Wow! I never saw that before! This movie... I'm never going to use a cell phone again. Well, <laughs> actually I will. And this movie is released by Lionsgate and Saban Films. Yes, Haim Saban's production company released this garbage. And it's basically what it is. It's the happening. Yeah, I find it funny because M. Light Shyamalan's film is even more entertaining than this. And that film was a piece of shit. I'm trying to make... Uh, the Tommy Knockers and the Langoliers look more like Oscar winning masterpieces. And I can't believe it. So, there you go. And on top of that, it's already celebrating its 30th anniversary for a movie which Stephen King calls it a moron movie, even though this was the only film that he ever directed. And that was Maximum Overdrive. I'll tell you this though, I've rather watched Maximum Overdrive millions of times than having to sit through Cell once. Same goes with the Tommy Knockers and the Langoliers. Fuck this movie. Th this movie can go to hell. That's all I can say. That's the movie Cell. Avoid this garbage. And I give that movie zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Much later. Bye!